I, of course, left this thing on because everybody always asks James, like, what rig are you wearing? Are my tits going to be sweaty? Probably. Mm. Whenever I take this thing. Sweaty Delicious. sheets. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, God. Oh, oh, God. First things first. We take care of the people who take care of us. That's why supporters on Subscribestar and Player in these past few months have gotten a shot at limited edition Tiger Stripe TFB TV Blue Force Gear Slings. We only made 100. First access to the Thunder Ranch Concealed Carry class in New Orleans for the first time ever, with more to come next year. Free cover for the TriggerCon after party in a few weeks, plus the usual six $250 gift certificates that we give away to Top Gun Supply to buy whatever you want with and four $100 Blue Force Gear gift certificates. We give those away every single month to our supporters, not to mention the upcoming Beachmaster shotgun. Only 50 will be made, and only supporters will get a shot at them. We don't take money in exchange for positive reviews. We're viewer-supported. That's why it's so very important for you to help us on Subscribestar, Player, Patreon if you have to. You give us something, we give you something back. Come on, join the fun. Oh boy, I'm going to hate this video. One of my most favorite guns of all time, the legendary H&K MP5. The Mr. Rogers of submachine guns. Comfy, trustworthy, everyone loves it, but it died 20 years ago. And now we've got my Swiss Uncle Carl's Magnum Opus, the state-of-the-art APC-9, first made in 2011. The first submachine gun purchased by the Department of Defense since the grease gun. These guns are the same caliber. They occupy the same space in firearm classification. They more or less do the same thing as each other. They're even really close in price. But one of these guns is better than the other. And we're going to talk about that today on TFB TV. The H&K MP5, the granddaddy of modern, reliable submachine guns. And in many ways, it's never been replicated. Built in the 1960s, it's got a well-deserved reputation for being one of the most reliable, accurate, controllable SMGs ever built. A legacy that no sad, pathetic gun tuber will ever take away, no matter what the conclusion of this video is. Easy to shoot, easy to love. Ask John McClain. I've done 10 million videos on the MP5, so I'm not going to go on too long about it. Let's talk about the new guy. The APC-9 is made by my boys at BNT in Switzerland to cut to the chase. I feel like Carl Brueger looked at the MP5, took all of the things that were great about it, borrowed them, and then improved in the few areas where the MP5 is lacking. So I break these two guns down. We go front to back at the Neutral Ground Gun Company in New Orleans, Louisiana, going over the differences right now between these two guns. Comparison, H&K MP5, B&T APC9. Let's go front to back here. Up front, you're gonna see that these both have tri-lug adapters. A tri-lug allows you to attach a suppressor quicker than a conventional screw-on. This actually is the new B&T RBS SQD Compact. I'm sure that stands for something. I just don't know what it is right now. You can see it's got a tri-lug attachment here. Now, usually how the tri-lug works, you slap it on there, put backward pressure, quarter twist, and it's on. With B&T's new RBS QRD ABC123, look at this, you're done. That's it. It slides on. To take it off, you press this button. You press the button, it comes off. Now, as you can see, the shoulder here for this suppressor it works perfectly with a factory MP5, and that is as close as it's going to get, right? It's buttoned up right against the cocking tube. So this is a neat suppressor, even if you have an MP5. You don't need an APC-9 for this suppressor. Same thing. Boom. Put it on there. Pretty cool. Moving further back, sights. The HK MP5 has traditional diopter sights. These are known as some of the best sights that you can get for a submachine gun. That's it. It's uh, two concentric circles. Of course, you can adjust the diopter sight and size here on the rear drum. Fantastic. BNT APC9, sights that it has on it. It's got like emergency sights you can see right here. So something happens for whatever reason, you don't have your flip up sights deployed. You've got traditional like pistol sights. You see you've got the two little rear notches here and a front notch, like a front sight. But you also have the option 
to flip them up and then you get like standard A2 style. Now that said, these are plastic sights. So they're not gonna be as durable as what's on the H and K MP5. If you don't like them, you can just get rid of them and buy different sights. But the ones that come with them, they're pretty decent for being plastic. Now, we look at the four ends. The four end on the H and K MP5, very easy to change out, right? I mean, you just hit this little pin, comes out. You can put whatever you want on there. You can put M lock. They make M lock handguards for it. They make quad rails for it. But you can see with the BNT APC, you are getting a monolithic aluminum upper, which is extremely robust but lightweight. And you've got M lock slots. These have Picatinny rails over them, but you can put whatever you want in those M lock slots. You also have a full sight rail up top, which you don't have with the MP5. This is a bit of a pain in the ass. You got to get one of these janky ass front sight things and you got to install it with a couple of screws and it's just clinging on with a claw for dear life to the top of this receiver. So this is uh, a suboptimal option where the BNT kind of has it beat. Same thing when you look at the manipulation. So the trigger, totally different between the two. This is the BNT APC9 with the aluminum lower receiver and it's got the flat trigger. It's like an AR style flat trigger. It is effing wonderful. It is a good trigger by any measure. With the h &K MP5, you've got kind of a mushy, you got this curved trigger. It's fine, like I, I'm fine with it. I, I, in fact, even enjoy it. But compared to the APC9, there's a lot of travel and it's a little smooth, a little squishy, longer reset. This is a phenomenal trigger in the BNT APC. Then you look at your controls. Now, I'm actually a pretty big fan of the Paddle Magazine release on the HK MP5. Nobody realistically uses the uh, push button magazine release. Everyone just uses the paddle, so this is functionally worthless, and it got Marco killed in Die Hard because he did not have a paddle magazine release on his converted HK94, so he had to give the old HK reach around, as I like to call it, and his slow mag change got him killed. The BNT lightning fast mag changes. You've got an ambi mag release button, so it works either side and you've got an ambi bolt release, or you've got these ambi fold away charging handles. Is it as cool as the traditional MP5 slap? Absolutely not. But it's also kind of cool to maybe not get shot to death when you're performing a reload, and the APC9 has the MP5 absolutely beat in that respect. Thanks for the advice. APC9. You can change this out. Right now it's taking MP9 magazines. These are like the traditional B&T magazines. I like them, they're lightweight, but they are plastic. They're nothing like these steel monsters that come with the H&K MP5. These are also a lot less expensive. You're looking at about like 70 bucks right now for an H&K MP5 factory magazine, maybe more, where I'm seeing more and more of these for like you know, 40 bucks, 50 bucks or less, even though they are plastic. And KCI is actually making a pretty good knockoff of this magazine that we actually use today. And it's even cheaper. I think like you're probably 20 or 30 bucks, but I'm just speculating. But you also have the ability, considering this upper receiver is the serialized component, to just swap out these lowers. So you can get Glock mag, Sig P320 mag, the, of course, BNT MP9 mags, which just look right to me as straight mags, but if you want it to take lock mags, you can do that. Not the case with the MP5. You're married to these super expensive Teutonic magazines. In terms of stocks, I like both stocks that we have here. So this is the traditional MP5 collapsing stock. You got a little switch right here. It collapses, locks into place. You press switch again, you deploy it. There's a whole shitload of different stocks that you can get for this. Fixed stock, folding stock, collapsing stock, whatever the case may be. B&T makes a ton of stocks for the MP5. Now, neither of these is using a universal mount type. As far as B&T, again, you have a proprietary mount up 
But that's fine because it's a very sleek integration, just like with the MP5, where you're removing kind of the back end of the receiver to have a stock. Now, 1913 rails back here, they're pretty cool, but those stocks tend to be pretty janky looking. And yeah, you can use all different types of stocks, but this really is a clean, seamless interface. B&T, again, they make folders. They make fixed stocks if you want them. They make collapsing stocks, telescoping stocks. I'm sure you could probably even get a 1913 adapter if you really wanted to, but I don't know why you would. Now, this is probably my favorite stock for the APC-9 series. It's adjustable for length of pull and for comb, for your cheek height. You can, of course, fold it to stow it, and then when you need to deploy it, you can stretch it out, adjust the cheek comb. So this is a really, really nice stock. Now, the big thing with the MP5 versus the BNT APC9. The BNT APC9 is absolutely phenomenal. It is a very simple and reliable straight blowback system with a little hydraulic buffer in the back to absorb some of the recoil. In the meantime, the H&K MP5 has the legendary H&K roller delayed locking system, makes the recoil non-existent. Now this is also an all steel gun versus an aluminum gun or an aluminum and polymer gun because you can get these lowers in polymer. So this gun's gonna be lighter. Between this gun being heavier and that roller delay blowback, there is nothing quite like shooting an H&K MP5. One of the most reliable guns ever made. One of the most controllable on full auto. The APC-9, absolutely phenomenal. The first submachine gun adopted by the US military since the grease gun in World War II. So you know that this is a functional, reliable, good piece of equipment, but of course the H&K MP5 needs no introduction. This gun's been doing it since the 60s. It's still doing it today as one of the most reliable, easiest to shoot submachine guns. Absolutely bulletproof, bombproof, whatever proof. Foolproof almost. But I love the MP5. I love the B&T APC9. That was just a little features and specs comparison for you. Accuracy for these two guns is about the same. I'm dumping whole magazines without even really trying into one hole on paper. These guns are phenomenal to shoot. That was not even, not even trying. I love this effing gun. I mean, same, same with the MP5. Just 25 feet, one hole, what you gonna do? So how do I feel about this matchup? Look, if you're in the market for both and you've got neither and you can only have one, bless your heart, it's a tough choice. The MP5 is a proven workhorse. There's gotta be hundreds of thousands of them across the world, but it seems pretty clear to me you saw the score. The BNT is probably the better, more practical option. It's more modular. It's got the ability to accept MP9 mags or Glock mags or SIG mags. There's a 50% parts compatibility across the different calibers of this gun. You can get it in 10 millimeter easily if you want to. Pro tip, you do. It's easier to mount optics and accessories without any additional expense. The BNT trigger is effing phenomenal. One of the best triggers I've ever felt. The ergonomics are better. It's lighter. It's more compact. It's faster. It's easier to manipulate. And it's fully ambidextrous. My MP5 weighs seven and a quarter pounds as configured. My APC-9 weighs just 5.9 pounds, even with this big polymer stock on it. This gun is so compact. I could take it just about anywhere I want to with the B&T Covert sling bag. And it isn't just me. Why do you think the DOD bought the APC-9? That's right to replace its aging fleet of MP5s. Look, I still trust the MP5 more than the new guy on the block here, and the MP5 is a bit smoother to shoot. But even though the APC-9 is a straight blowback, the BNT hydraulic buffer system really does seem to work, as I can control these guns very well in semi or full auto, just like the MP5, and I've got plenty of trigger time behind both in semi-auto and full auto. It seems quite clear on paper. The b and is gonna make more sense for more people, but let's be honest, these are $3,000 nine millimeter carbines. They don't make much sense at all to any of us, do they? Won't stop me. Probably not gonna stop you. I mean, our wives and girlfriends really are right. We are absolute idiots.
but I still love you guys anyways. Thanks a ton for tuning in as usual. Thank you to Top Gun Supply. Like I said, get on Patreon, subscribe, star player, and join us, and you have a chance of winning one of six $250 gift certificates to Top Gun Supply, one of four $100 gift certificates to Blue Alpha Gear every single month, automatically just by being a member at the $4.99 level or higher. It's that easy. Not to mention, you're supporting us and keeping us independent. Thanks a ton, guys. Take care. Oh, oh, God. Uh, so, anyways, this is the Spiritus Systems, uh, the Microfight rig. That's what it's called, right, Ryan? It's a sure. Microfight? Yeah, I think so. I don't remember what it's called. Mark something, whatever. And I've got my pistol caliber carbine or pistol magazine inserts here and my AR mag inserts. You can throw a pistol mags in there too, PCC mags, of course. Um, but absolutely love this. My favorite rig. I am not sponsored by Spiritus. I have nothing to do with them. I don't even think they like me that much. 